All right, guys, this is Steve here with another CG Geek Blender tutorial. Tutorial? And today we're going to be making a football in Blender. This uh, the simple football scene you see right here, we'll be just creating the football in this scene, but we'll be doing a lot of modeling with some modifiers and some unique methods to get some clean topology on this uh, nice looking mesh. And then we'll go and do some texturing with some little details and whatnot to make it look nice and good. And a great model that can be used in a lot of different things. And also just a good fun project to get more familiar with modeling in Blender. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So let's, uh, let's do it. So without further ado, let's delete our cube, delete our lamp, and switch to Cycles Render. I'm going to put my cursor in the center here because I moved it. And uh, I'm going to start off by opening up a refer reference image. So one thing that you're going to have to keep in mind with this um, tutorial is keep an eye on what perspective you are in, because this could get you messed up if you're not careful. Right, front, number three is right, number one is front, seven is up, and etc. That should be all you need. Um, I'm going to start with opening up a reference image. So I'm going to go background images, enable that, and add in an image. I'll throw a link in the description, but I'm just opening up a basic football uh, image, basically, for some reference. Basic NFL football. All right, so what mesh should we start with? Well, I'm going to start by adding in a cylinder. I'm going to leave it at 32 vertices. Don't have to change that. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, scale it up to be just around there, which is good. And now I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to control R, put a slit down the middle. All right. And now I'm going to box select delete all these vertices, X, delete vertices. You see we still have those back there, that's fine. Box select, delete these vertices, that's good. Now we'll delete these, X, delete vertices. We're gonna delete these, X, delete vertices, and top view, we're gonna delete these. So <laughs> deleting most of our mesh, leaving just the eighth of our mesh. All right, now we're gonna add that all back with mirror modifiers. So we're going to be using three different mirror modifiers. Just go ahead and add three of them in right now. Add modifier mirror. And first one will be X, second one will be Y, and third one will be Z. We go Z. There we go. And we have our whole sphere back, but it will be much easier to modify. All right. Now, the only one that we want clipping enabled on is the Z. So choose clipping on that one. And now uncheck merge on these other two. Very good. Now let's add in one more modifier, and that'll be a subdivision surface modifier. Crank the views up on that a little bit. All right, let's enable smooth shading over here in our toolbar, and we should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is go into wireframe mode with the Z, grab all these vertices, and drag them over here to the end of our mesh and scale them way down to something like that, and then drag them down. Okay, and then I'm gonna scale them down a little bit more, drag them up a little bit, and good. Now I'm gonna grab this bottom vertice and lift it up a little bit. So we have this small gap going right along the bottom. And uh, all right, something like that is good. And uh, now I'm going to add in, well, let's first scale up our center one here. You can see that now we have the subdivision surface. It's not going to the edge. So let's scale that up again but not all the way because we'll be adding some more cuts in now. Go ahead, control R, add in another cut, and you can see that's gonna raise that up. So I scaled it up just a little too much. I'll scale it back down, grab it down along the Z axis, pull it down to something more reasonable. Scale, grab it along the Z axis. So right now we're working in front view and I'm getting this nice seam along here. And I'm just gonna scale this one up, move it up, pull it that way a little bit, and scale it down a little bit, drag it down, not too bad. Let's throw one more here and control our one more here. Now we have to also mind our top view. You can see, oh, that's not good. No big deal. We're just going to grab these, pull them up close to the edge there. B, box select all those, pull them up close to the edge there. Box select all these, etc. And do that with these. Pull these actually away a little bit. Oops, delete those. 
and these middle ones as well. So pull these out like so. Very good. This one can go in a little bit. All right, so this is looking good. Just a little bit of more tweaking, but um, it's looking good. Now I'm gonna scale up this uh, one down here a little bit, pull it back. Just kind of getting that football shape going. The center one might need to be scaled down a little bit. And you can see that now that we changed that from uh, top view, we need to change it from side view a little bit too. So just a little bit of going back and forth and getting them looking good in both views. But I'm um, just gonna scale up a little bit. It's not too hard. Top view and pull this up there. Very good. Scale it up a little bit, something like that. This one could be possibly scaled just a tad and pulled out like so. Move this one in a little bit. All right, I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty close. We basically want that look. You might be confused as to why, but that is where we're gonna be putting our seams uh, on the football because the football is made up of seams, basically. It's like four pieces of leather stitched together. So um, that is why I'm leaving these gaps here. All right, pull this one. Oh, we'll pull this one in a little bit. Scale it down just a tad, pull them in a little bit. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that shape. It looks pretty football-esque to me. And uh, that's pretty good. If, you, if you're not happy with any of these loops, you can double tap G, kind of reposition them a little bit. Option, click, option, uh, right click them, and then double tap G, and you can kind of move them around a little bit getting whatever position you want on them. You can pull this one down a little bit. All right, so that's good. Very good. Now, let us work on the tips here. Now, the leather kind of folds over itself at the tips here. So I'm gonna option, right click, select that, pull it back a little bit, and extrude, pull it out, pull it down, scale it up a little bit, something like that, then extrude, pull it down, scale it. Let me just move over so you can see what's happening. Go to side view, or right view, number pad three. Pull out like that. Let me go to Z so I can see this. You can see how it's important to be switching back and forth in views to be, uh, to be handling this correctly. All right, just kind of making this nice and circular looking as you can see right there. That's good, maybe scale it up a little bit and pull it like that. Trying to keep it even topology all the way down. And uh, let's pull this one in a little bit. Now I'm just gonna extrude, pull it in, and scale it down. And then go side view and pull it towards the center. So we get that tight knit look. That's not too bad. Needs a little bit of adjusting. It's a little bit small, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna option click that one, scale that one up a little bit, and raise it up like so. And uh, that's not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Might need a little bit of tweaking, and again, it still might be a little small. Maybe I'll scale the whole thing up just a tad, pull it back a little bit. But uh, that's basically what you want for the tip. Now, this looks like it got a little bit messed up. You can just box select it all, W, and smooth. Kind of smooth those vertices out a little bit. Scale them down, and in side view, or right view, pull them in a little tighter. There we go. Scale these out a little bit, pull them out a little bit, and these are a little bit overlapping up here, so I need to. Uh, no, let me, I should go to Control Three, so I can go to the side that has my uh, meter modifier on it. Pull them out a little bit. It looks like this vertice here. Let me see. Grab you. Where are you? This one that this is connected to. It's got a little flipped in here. That one. Nope. This one. Got a little ahead of itself. So let's just pull these two out. Whoops. And grab you. Box select grab you. Ah, it's like behind it. There we go. And pull that out a little bit as well. There we go. That's looking much cleaner and much better. That's pretty good. Let's move on. So um, for this seam across the middle now, let me option click, move both these down a little bit just because they're bothering me. There we go. Okay. Now, for these seams here, I'm going to option select, and I'm going to do them both at the same time, select that one as well, and what I'm going to do is make sure your cursor is in the center like it still is from the beginning. If it's not, you shift S, cursor to center, but uh, cursor's in the center, so I'm going to hit period 
which turns this option on down here, which means the pivot point is now the 3D cursor. So I'm going to extrude, scale, and it's gonna scale in on the 3D cursor. Now uh, I'm gonna move it down a little bit, like so. And you can see what I'm getting now, I'm getting a nice lip in there. Now I'm going to also pull it in slightly up here. And uh, now I'm going to enable clipping and merging on both these. And now I'm gonna extrude one more time, scale it down a little bit, and let those clip together by moving this this way a little bit, and it'll clip, and moving them that way. Is, whoops, I think these are already clipped. Let me see, it's a little hard to see, but if I move those down, you can see they clip nicely. All right, so if I tab out of edit mode, you can see we got that, which is not bad, a little bit, a little bit severe, too much crease, but it's not bad. So I'm gonna option click this crease here, just kind of pull it down a little bit. Option click this one. I can double tap G and kind of move it in to tighten it up or not, depending on what I want. And uh, that's looking a little better. Same with this one. Maybe move this one this way a little bit. Tighten up that crease a little bit. Move that one in a little bit too. And uh, it's not looking too bad though. It's pretty good. It's nice and realistic looking. It looks like the, uh, pull that one in a little bit. It looks like three or four, or I mean four, uh, four pieces of leather tied together. And uh, there is the topology and shape of that. Nice clean topology. And that is good for our football mesh. So let me save my project now real quick. I'll just do football, nice and simple. Great name, great name. All right, save as a blender file. We got beautiful football there. Now let's move on to the laces. All right, so for the laces, I'm going to use a few curves to uh, place the laces across this curve. Basically, if that doesn't make sense, just hang on and it will. So I'm gonna place my cursor up here at the top of my football. Shift A, add in curve, a Bezier curve. So I'm just gonna quick hit R and rotate this 90 degrees along the X axis. And you can see we get that curve there. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and scale this along the Z to zero. So both our curves are, let me see, I can change this back to medium point now, no more need for the 3D cursor, and scale it down a little bit. So we got a pretty even straight curve, and let me just grab that and move it, whoops, tab out of edit mode, and move that to the center there. All right, that's good. Now I want my laces to travel, you can see in my reference image, oh, about halfway down, maybe a third of the way down. So I'm gonna grab this one, scale it up a little bit and hang on I'm just gonna first grab both of these W let me see subdivide put one in the center there and I believe I can just delete this one and premier modifier on this let me see if that works with curves mirror very good mirror along the x-axis clipping sure all right so we get our mirror modifier set up on our curve here rotate this curve and you can see it's rotating the other side great Grab the center point and pull it down right there. Pull it back a little bit more and pull it down. And pull this one just down a tad. All right, and rotate that a little bit. And cool. So we got that curve going right along there. It's not coming down quite enough, so I'm gonna scale up my curve and pull it all the way down to the end there. Rotate it. Just keep an eye on seeing if it's across evenly. And that looks pretty close. Just tweak it a little bit more and we should be good to go. Excellent. All right, so we got that curve going nicely along the top, and now we can start adding in our laces. So for the laces, I'm gonna use a curve as well. So to shift add S cursor to selected, so it's right there on top. I'm gonna go shift A, add in Ibiza curve, tab it edit mode, A, scale along the Z to zero, scale on the Y to zero, and uh, there we go, we got a straight curve. Scale both sides down a little bit. Top view, rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing that way. Scale it down a bit more, something like that. And let's go to our curve settings here. So we're gonna leave this at half filled, but we're gonna turn the depth up quite a bit so we get something like that. And you can see it's a very rough triangular shape. And it's also rotated, so we need to rotate this. Rotate minus 90 degrees. Whoop, let me see, rotate along the X, rotate along the Y. 
rotate along the Z. All right, we want to rotate along the X, minus 90. Whoops, rotate along the Y, minus 90. Hang up, let me see. Go Z so I can see it. And I can't seem to rotate it in that direction. That's weird. Let me select that, rotate. Rotates that way, but it doesn't rotate that way. Hmm. If I double tap R, it does though. Strange. Let me uh, let me just turn the depth and the resolution up a little bit here. Boom, 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 boom. We get the nice curve that we're looking for. Still can't rotate it though. Is this locked? Let me see. No, it doesn't look like it's locked anywhere. Hmm. Weird. Well, anyways, I can just double tap R and do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna double tap R. Whoops. Go to side view here, double tap R and rotate it. There we go, just something like that. And rotate like that. So we got straight across there, very good. Top view, and uh, let's grab both these vertices. W, subdivide them, so there's one in the center. Go to right view, and rotate this a lot. Something like that. And we can do the same with this one. Rotate it like that. And grab both these, very good, and pull them down a little bit. There we go. So we got a lace moving across our football like so. Let me scale these up just a tad. Pull them down a little bit. Give it a little variation. You know, let's rotate the center one a little bit. Just so they look natural and cool. Very good. Is smooth shading enabled? Yes, it is. All right. You can also, let me go here. Curve settings. Turn this curve set uh, amount down a little bit because we don't need that much. Very good. Now what I'm going to do is pull this mesh over here and add a modifier, a ray modifier. Let's uh, leave that at fixed count for now and leave it at that. And add a modifier, curve modifier. Now this curve modifier is going to go on our Bezier curve. So you can see it snaps it right there. Now I'm going to change the, uh, the, what do you call it, this option, the uh, direction that we're arraying on, you could say, to the bottom one. And I give it about a point, 0.2, 0.2. Very good. You can see it's following along the curve. And I'm just going to click my count up here. I'm going to go 8. And then I can just kind of move my object here. And it will be moving along the curve. So that is cool. And let me um, let me first just move this object over here. I guess we get that. And if I drag this along, it follows the curve. Although it's not following at 100%. And that's because we need to apply our mirror modifier. Wait, what? Can I apply constructive modifiers on curve? Huh, that's weird. You can't apply a curve? Well, I guess the uh, mirror modifier won't work for this, and we'll have to just quick do this the old fashioned way. Extrude, pull it out, scale it up a little bit, and rotate. No biggie, just uh, good to know. Very good. Let's pull it out down to there, and let's scale it up a little bit. That should work. Now, if I drag this along the curve, it will follow nicely the way it should. Very good. And you can see we get our curve laces moving along there. They need to be a little further apart, so let's crank that up. And this curve miles modifier is really cool. I uh, didn't mention that, but I really like this modifier. It's very sweet and easy to use. Now that we got that, let me turn the depth up a little bit more. And then maybe turn the amount that this is apart down a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good. Let me go tab out of edit mode and jump out of wireframe. And you can see we got that. Doesn't look bad, but we need those center laces. So we're going to duplicate our center curve here. So in side view, or front view, I should say. Shift D, duplicate this curve. All right, and we're going to give it a few settings of its own. Give it some depth. There we go. It has some height to it. Give it some resolution. There we go. That's all we need, really. That's all we need. So pull it down a little bit and pull it over. And this time we're going to add a array modifier. Just move it over on the center one here to be about 0.8. And then we can turn off this one. Whoops, wrong one. 0.8 on that one. Negative 0.8 is what we're going for. All right, there we go. And there we go. Very good. Snap it down right on the place we want it. I think the curve could be a little bit larger. There we go. Crank up the depth a little bit. That looks nice. And uh, let me drag it over there just a tad. 
And we need to quick do a little bit of extruding on the ends of this curve. So grab that one, extrude, and grab this one and scale. All right, pull it up a little bit. If we go wireframe, you can see you get this. Rotate them underneath because the laces kind of come and tuck underneath itself. So that's what I'm going to do. And you get that kind of look. And it looks pretty nice. All right. And this side as well. So scale it down a little bit. Pull it. Whoops. I hit it. So option H. Pull it up a little bit. Extrude. And fold it under itself. Play around the curve a little bit to get it nice. But I think that is going to be pretty good. So there are the laces on our football now. And that's looking good. All right, so now we're on to the materials, which is going to be the final part of this tutorial and the possibly the funnest part, although it's been pretty fun along the whole way. We're going to be using cycles, so make sure you have changed to cycles render up here. And I'm going to start off by setting up a few quick things like a sun lamp. So put your cursor in this vicinity, shift A, add in a lamp and a sun lamp. We'll just double tap R, so hit R twice, rotate it, pointing at the lamp, and then check your side views and front views to make sure. All right, that's looking pretty awesome. So we'll give that a strength of eight in a very slight yellow tint, and that's good for that. Now we're going to open up a quick HDR. There will be a link to this in the description, so don't panic if you don't have it. Just going to open up a stadium HDR that I have here. Whoops, lost it. There we go and uh, use the 3K version, very good. So an HDR will help show off our materials nicely. So let's unwrap. So if you're pretty happy with your modifier, uh, your <laughs> mesh, and ready to apply some of the modifiers, you will probably want to first start off by selecting everything, not that, shift Ding it, and moving it to a different layer in case you ever want to go back to adjusting it. But now that I did that, I'm going to apply let me see which one is this, which one is this. Not seeing it change anything. Oh, I got the wrong mesh, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this modifier. So apply, and I'm gonna leave these two for materials. So if I tab in edit mode, you see we get this whole mesh here. That is fine. I'm going to just U and unwrap. I'm gonna split my window here, just grabbing the corner and pulling. And note editor. Well, no, we're going to the UV image editor first. You can see we get our football unwrapped nicely. So I'm going to open up a texture that I will again include in the description. But this is just a basic texture I found on the web that I tiled. I did a pretty crummy job of tiling it. It's not the greatest, but you know, it looks okay and you don't really notice. And uh, so you see we get that football texture nicely tiled. Just You can see it could use a little bit of touch up work, but um, it looks pretty good. So I just left it. Scale this to two. There we go, and that might be all we need. Maybe, Command Z, scale it to 2.5, just in case. Very good. Now we can go to our node editor. There we go. Hit N to close our properties tab, and new material. All right, I'm gonna use this diffuse material. Let me give myself, close that off, give myself some more room. It's important to have plenty of room to work in. So give yourself a lot of room. Shift A, add in a image texture and make that the football texture. Connect it to the diffuse, and let's see what rendered view looks like right now. Not bad. You can see we get the texture tiled nicely across our entire mesh, and it doesn't look too bad. So, very cool. I'm gonna quick save my file, and we'll move on. Now, I'm going to add in a shader glossy shader. I'm gonna add two of these, actually. I'm gonna shift D and add another one. Not connected like that, just two of them. And mix shaders as well. Connecting the glossy to the bottom and the color to the glossy. So something like that. And then we will duplicate this, boom, and do it again, right there. So the first glossy shader is going to be kind of a overall very slight glossiness. I'm gonna give it about a 0.25 in the roughness and just mix it in very slightly, 0.03. And let's see what just that looks like without the second one. So disconnect that. Go rendered. And you don't see a whole lot. Maybe I can turn the value of this up a little bit. But we should be getting this kind of overall lighting glossiness. 
if I uh, crank this down a little bit, you'd see a little sharper amount of glossy kind of in there. But I'm going to leave it at about 0.2. Very good. And maybe turn the amount up just a tad because I like glossiness. Very good. Now the second glossy shader here, let me connect this in. This one is going to be, you can see it's really glossy. This one's going to be pretty much completely reflective. So I'm going to go 0 0.002 so we can see like, the sky in that. That looks totally fake right now, but I'm going to give it a very small value. So you just get a little bit of that sharper shine coming in like from the lights on it. It looks a little bit wet, but uh, it looks pretty nice, and I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to do something like that, maybe a little less than that, 0.2. And now we're going to shift A, add in a vector bump node, and get some of that really good looking bumps coming in. So this is going to be the height, and I'll add in a vector mapping node. Hello, very good. Whoops, not vector mapping, sorry about that. Color ramp. Connect the color to the factor and the color to the height. And this will be how I control the amount of glossiness on it. I'm just going to, for now, give it a tiny bit more black and then pull the white over. And then turn the strength of the bump down to about a 0.35 and the distance maybe to a 0.2. And now connect the normal to the normal of glossy, to the normal of this glossy, and to the normal of the diffuse. All right, so you can see we're getting some of that real nice looking bump texture being mapped across our football now. And that's not looking too bad. It could probably be even a little bit stronger though. First, I'm gonna try, let me see what an invert looks like. No, I don't want inverted. Just want a little more strength to that. So I'll go 0.4 and then I'm gonna play around just a tad with the blackness here. If I pull it in a little bit, something like that. Maybe pull the white over a little bit more. All right, and I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe go 0.1 of the distance. Just kind of try and feel this out a little bit. That's not looking too bad. Yes, that's looking pretty good. Pretty good indeed. I might have it mapped just a little bit too much across, and I could probably turn up the glossiness a little bit. So I'll go 0.1 with the first glossy shader there. Very good. And take the color out of this glossy shader. There's our problem. I didn't realize I don't want the color connected. Now I can lower this down to about a 0 0.04 or less, maybe 0 0.03 or 2. So we just get a little bit of that gloss coming on there. Very good. There we go. Now this black needs to come down a little bit because you can see it's cutting out there. So um, no, no invert. Turn that black down a little bit. Very good. And that's looking pretty sweet. That's pretty good. If you adjust the distance, you'll sometimes get some dif different results. Not always good. Maybe just leave it at a 0.15, something like that. And there is the bump texture on our football. Now something is still just looking a little bit weird about this, and I think it is that I want inverted. So let me try that, and yeah, there we go. This is looking more like the proper bump that we're looking for. So go 0.35, and now maybe play around with this just a tad, give it a little bit more black. There we go. I think that is it. Yes, yes, yes. Now you're seeing, you're getting the light on the flat areas and then the grooves. That is exactly what we want. So you do want invert checked. And that is looking great. So let's move on to the next step. And that was just adding a little bit of dirt to this football. So it looks a little bit too clean. So what I did to kind of mess that up is add in a noise texture, All right? We're gonna add a noise texture and a color ramp. Connect those two up. And then we're gonna bring in just a, let me just shift D, duplicate that one. We're gonna bring in just a basic bark texture. Let me see what I got here. I'm just gonna bring in this one. So it's kind of a dirty looking bark and uh, I'll include a link to this in the description. But basically, I'm going to mix this texture in a little bit. So Shift D, Color Mix. I'll pop it in there with that one. And you can see we get that dirt coming across. That is what this noise texture is for. It will be the factor. So grab the color, put it in the factor. And if we pull these black values and white values closer together, we can get a nice mask letting in that dirt in certain areas. So you can see that's really gross looking. <laughs> Too much and gross looking. Let me turn the detail up a little bit. Let me turn the size up a little bit. 
And now to tweak the amount that we get, I'm gonna pull it black in a little bit more. And uh, to tweak the amount we get, I'm gonna take this white value and just darken it. And that will give us less and less dirt. So I'll leave it at something like that and you'll get those little spots that look like dirt. So that's pretty cool. And now there's other things you can do as well if you wanna add just some variation to the color of the mesh. But uh, there's, I mean, it's really not 100% necessary. So uh, I'm not gonna really bother with that. You might wanna connect the mix to that up to the color ramp now. So that dirt is affecting the bump mapping a little bit in there as well. Cool. Now uh, let's give the laces a quick texture, but I think we're almost done now. It's looking great and uh, it's ready to be used in whatever case you might need. So I just gave the uh, laces a quick material by clicking new material if you didn't see that. And all I did with the laces is make the color a little bit darker something like that and then added in a texture image texture opened up a bark texture that I have here again it will be included now one thing you need to note is when you're texturing the curves you'll want to go to the curve settings and choose texture space use UV for mapping do that on both your curve models there very good and now I'm just going to color mix and pull this in front put this one in the bottom, leave this top one the same color as this one, and then connect her up to the color. Very good. And that will be just a half and half right now. You can see it doesn't look real great. But we're gonna do a noise texture and a color ramp, just like before, to give ourselves a nice mask. There we go, as a factor. Pull it in up nice and tight. Whoops, grab the black value, grab the white value. And you can see we get like some of that green looking, maybe turf color mixed into there. And then we take the white value down a little bit to turn the amount down. Something like that doesn't look bad though. And that's pretty good. So all we have to do to put this on the center one here is go to this center material by clicking on it and giving it our white material. Boom. Now the center line should have this material as well. Whoops, I don't know if I got that. There we go. Now it's textured across there, nicely. Maybe make this a little bit brighter, but you get some of that dirt on there as well. So there is our football. It, uh, it's pretty easy, but there's some unique techniques that you can do it, and then you can go ahead and put it in a scene like I did uh, in the scene I showed you in the beginning. But um, pretty easy, pretty simple, and it is great looking, very good looking. And if you wanted to use this for a game, you would just take these subdivisions down on it, boom, boom, and it still looks good, you know, for a game model or something like that with no subsurf. But uh, if you wanted to use this in a high quality render, you'd crank these up, obviously. So we'll go to like three. Then you get some nice, smooth curves. So that's going to do it, guys. I hope you uh, had some fun with this tutorial, learned something, and improved your Blender skills a little bit. That will do it for me, and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye bye.